Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're gonna to plant three varieties of beautiful ornamental grass. Look at these back here. Look at how gorgeous these are. So the really exciting thing about these grasses is that one is an older grass that I have experience with, one is brand new out this year, and one is brand new for next year, 2023. It is still quite warm outside and you know, not the most ideal time to be planting things. We tend to just kind of plant through the season, except for the last two weeks, we've kind of taken a break on that because it was 108, nine and 10 degrees, but now it's like covering around the 100 degree mark, but mostly in the 90s, which is nice. Aaron is mowing the lawn. I don't know if you guys can hear that. Um, anyway, we find that as long as we keep things hydrated, we keep an eye on things, and if they're tough things like naturally, you can kind of get away with it. Plus these things made it through that heat wave in their little nursery containers. So I think they're gonna be much happier planted out in the ground. So let's talk about these really quick, starting with the one that I know the most about because I've grown it and I've got several planted out in the South Garden. This one is Cheyenne Sky Panicum. Doesn't it have the most beautiful color? And I love that this one stays more compact in terms of um, width. So this one grows about three feet tall and 18 inches wide, and it comes up really fresh and kind of like a blue green color. And then the leaves start turning this kind of wine red color early in the season. Like you get a lot of interest from this one. And then you can see, hopefully I've got it kind of in the sun. Let's move it to the shade. Maybe we can see the seed heads a little bit better, but they get sh more and more showy as the season progresses. So this one is a zone four through nine and it's really tolerant of really any kind of soil, which is awesome. I mean, it can do high pH, it can do sandy soil, clay soil, it likes the full sun, really wonderful grass. This next one, it's called Lemon Squeeze Panacetum. It's the one that's new for this year. Now this one has been the hardest one to keep happy in its nursery container because I think it might be really root bound in there. They don't hold water. So it's one that we've been having to water twice a day. Probably would look better if I had been watering it three times a day, but we gotta, we gotta get these in the ground so we don't have to do that anymore. But oh my goodness, look at the seed heads on this one. Oh, I cannot wait for this one to just be all mature in the landscape, looking gorgeous with its beautiful summer and fall interest. Uh, but even before that, so maybe we can toss a picture up on the screen so you can see a better representation of what this one will look like once it's a little bit more, you know, happy in its spot. But this one has more chartreuse leaves, like chartreuse on the yellow side, like very bright and vibrant. It grows about, I don't know, two and a half to three feet tall and about two feet wide. Uh, it is a zone five through nine. But my favorite part are these bloom panicles right here, which turn copper in the fall. I think that is just gonna be so beautiful. One thing about this one, and really most penicillins, is that they want well-draining soil. So that's just the, really the only requirement. But this one, even having the more yellow leaves, uh, in all of their trial gardening and all of that, they don't burn. So it's a one that you can put in the full sun and enjoy that bright color. And then we have the one that's brand new for next year, 2023. Isn't this the most beautiful, graceful looking grass? This one is a Niagara Falls Panicum. And this one has a very interesting growth structure, growth habit, I guess. It gets a lot wider than most grasses. So this one grows four feet tall by four feet wide. Like that will create a very strong presence in the garden. The other couple of things that I love about this one is the width of the leaves. It's a very, it's a bold grass. Look at that. It's just very striking. And I love the icy blue color that I feel like a lot of areas in the garden need. It kind of just breaks up the green a little bit and I love that it's in the form of a grass, not you know necessarily like a blue evergreen. And I love the color of the seed heads. They're kind of a cream color, which just, the whole thing just looks so soft and kind of like graceful in a way. And this panicum, just like the other one, is a zone four through nine, but all three of them are deer resistant if that's something you deal with. So now we're gonna move out of this nice shady location. It's actually quite pleasant out here today. The thing about our area, you guys, I know I've told you a bunch of times, but we are high desert. So like today it's gonna get quite hot, but then tonight I think it's supposed to be 68 degrees. So it takes a good part of the day to actually reach that hot of a temperature. Um, and it's pretty dry heat and we've got a nice, like just a very soft breeze this morning. So in the shade, it's just, it's like the perfect temperature. First thing I'm gonna do before we actually get them out there, I'm going to stop and water all of these pots. So I want to make sure that all of the root balls are very hydrated before I actually put them in the ground. And I feel like that step right there helps eliminate a lot of shock. If you are planting when it's not quite ideal temperature wise, you just wanna start with a wet root ball.
Oh yeah, my word. Yep, that's why we can't keep them wet enough, right there. They need to be out in the ground. Woo. I got them all planted. I'm really excited to show you where they all ended up. Erin and I were just talking the other day about, you know, what things can we add to our garden that look really good this time of year? And that's kind of why I did the video on the 10 plants, the 10 perennials that just love and thrive in summer heat and still look really good. Uh, because, you know, in the spring months, it's really easy for things to look nice because they're just not being put through the paces. Uh, everything looks fresh, everything looks, you know, lush. And then you get to the hot time of the year and you're thinking, dang, I need to add some stuff to my space that still looks nice. It's not wanting to wilt or burn, um, that sort of thing. And ornamental grasses just fit that fit that bill so perfectly. So you can see in this space, we've leaned very heavily on things that look really good this time of year. And I'm so thankful for that because this is the entrance, you know, to our vegetable or I guess cut flower garden slash vegetable garden area. Um, so I added a couple of grasses on this side. I already have some Cheyenne Sky Panicums. In fact, let's just pop over here. I planted these last year or these might be Apache Rose. I think these are Apache Rose. Um, so same kind of family, same kind of growth habit as the Cheyenne Sky, but they're, they don't have that red coloring, but the plumes turn a rosy pinkish red color, really beautiful. Um, so you can kind of see what they look like a little more mature. I wanted something kind of soft-ish around the hose link because we still have to pull our hose out and they actually can take quite a, a bit of abuse that way. So kind of perfect right there. Uh, so on this side, I added the, Niagara Falls. So the wonderful thing about this one is that, like I said, they grow so big that I don't really need to plant them all together in the same spot to create impact. This will be impact all on its own. So in front of it, we've got the uh, ginger wine nine bark, and then that blue color is just gonna look really pretty. This whole area has got kind of a cool, feel because we've got the pinks, the blues, the, the uh, lemony yellows. Uh, so I think this will be a beautiful look right there. And then the second one is right down the way. Everything's looking pretty good. The geraniums, well, I was a little bit shocked. I honestly think so. I lost one right here, had to replace it. Looks like I might be losing another one. I think they might be getting a little bit too much overspray from the sprinklers right in the front. So I'm gonna root around in there and pull up the drip line right around the edge plants they should bounce like that one still has green anyway i've got another niagara falls right there which is kind of um, going to be backing this firefly peach sky yarrow and then the 
purple illusion, I think. That's the variety of Veronica. So a purple peach and then this beautiful grass. Let's look at it from this angle. Kind of see it all together in this space. <laughs> Just kind of working from one corner this way and then we'll eventually work our way through right in the center area here. I'm actually thinking right here of putting a larger green evergreen right in this space. And then we'll have larger shrubs in here. Maybe some Centara double blue lilacs. Wouldn't that be beautiful? I've got some little ones over in our kind of horde of uh, shrubs over there. I should put those in this space. That would be gorgeous. Okay, all the other grasses ended up in the other corner. This area is looking nice and full, nice and bright. Look at that. Oh, let's just start with these right here. Lemon squeeze penicetums. You know, in some spots, you just got to start somewhere. <laughs> and there's really not anything around it other than the Vanderwolf pine, but I thought that this color of green with the kind of coppery plumes and then that blue evergreen would look really pretty together. And I love the look of ornamental grasses kind of gracing the edge of a border. Now this you can see is not straight. In fact, where's the sprinkler? Uh, there are sprinklers in here somewhere, which would tell us exactly where the edge is. Might have to turn on the system to figure that out anyway. I think it actually comes out a little bit further and we're gonna be seeding this area with grass like probably in the next couple of weeks. Oh, there's one right here. Maybe it is in the right spot. Anyway, so we'll have a nice green grass pathway here and then we'll have the nice bright lemony yellow grass here. And then I'll start filling in with perennials around this section. Okay, let's walk this direction. Everything's just looking so good. Look at this Agastache that we planted earlier. Isn't that beautiful? Pollinators just loving it. Shout out to Paul. He came out here the other day and all the little areas where we've planted, I usually make a big mess and expose the drip tube and make it look pretty crummy. He came out and just added more uh, compost on top and fixed all the drip and it's looking really nice. White Swan uh, Echinacea right here, backing this beautiful geranium. I know that's not what this video is about. Stay on task, I get so excited though. Things are so pretty. Oh, this is a yarrow. This is the Peter Cottontail yarrow that I got as plugs this spring. Isn't that gorgeous? They're like little pillowy clouds out here, I love it. And then the next three Niagara Falls, I popped right behind this beautiful echinacea that's got the corally pink. There is a Legends of the Fall bottle brush right here. A little bit struggling, I think it needs more water, but hopefully we can get that to bounce and that will be the nice big structure right in this space. But I really like that pink with the soft blue of this grass. Now these will be a huge statement because I did plant them all together. It'll just be this huge drift and you know, big um, of this grass. But in this large area, you know, you gotta pick some things to be your centerpiece. If I just did one of this or that around, it wouldn't be as striking. Okay, next one's over here. I need to get with it with this area. Oh, White Wands Veronica that we dug up and transplanted from right by the garden is starting to bloom again. Look at all those flower buds. Didn't mind being transplanted right in the middle of the summer. It's awesome. Okay, I tucked one of the Lemon Squeeze Penicetum right here. You can see we've got a gorgeous drift of Superbina Imperial Blue. Hands down my favorite annual this year. I mean, the color, the performance, the way the plants look so fresh all the time, love them. Anyway, we've got some phlox in here and uh, Agastache and some daylilies. There is a double yellow peony in here and an Autumn Brilliant Service Berry. This grass I think looks gorgeous right there. It looks really pretty from this angle right now with that kind of morning light shining in this. Well, it's kind of kind of midday light at this point. But I think it looks really pretty. Next grass is here. Okay, so these are the Cheyenne Skies right here. We've got some denim and lace Russian sage in this area. And I actually thought that I would maybe pop like one, two more in here, just to have that purple kind of come around the front of this little drift, but only to about here, so we can start something new. And then maybe I will pop one, two more of the Russian sage behind the echinacea. So it can kind of just be like this undulating drift, you know, in the front and then to the back and then back behind this Corinthian linden. And that color looks so good. These echinacea we planted not long ago, the Cheyenne spirit, kind of perfect to have the Cheyenne sky grass in here. I didn't even think about that. But I think the color of this grass with the tiger eye sumacs in the back, is just really pretty. Now these are the ones that keep the 18 inch spread. So they'll just kind of, you know, grow like the first ones I showed you, the Apache Rose they'll be a little bit more compact in the width department. And that's it, you guys. That's where all the grasses ended up. I'm thrilled with all of them and I'm thrilled to be out here planting again. Even taking those couple of weeks off in the summer when it's really hot from planting at least and you know, kind of turning to maintenance mode, it's kind of nice to do something different in the beginning. It's kind of like winter. 
I always am looking forward to winter and then I have a little taste of it and then I want it to be spring and summer again. Uh, so it is nice to be out here adding to this space and I just wish that I had pictures of this space from every single angle uh, from last year just to see how much different it looks this year and Aaron and I were also talking about how much different it's going to look next year. You know once all of these perennials we've added so many perennials this year and shrubs and you know first year it's always a little you know iffy some of them shock a little bit some of them burn and don't look that great in second year they look just so spectacular so we're really looking forward to that anyway i hope you guys enjoyed this video today hope you're having a great day yourselves and we will see you in the next video